Welcome everybody, welcome to 10 Minute Reviews. Jason here bringing you today's video. As always guys, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Don't forget to check the links down below for links to today's book and anything else that might be applicable. I could use the traffic through the, the Amazon link, so I definitely appreciate it. The contest is obviously over, it was over almost a month ago. Uh, I'm sending out the emails right now to the winners. I do have more signed books, so I will be doing more, more contests coming up. And thank you very much to our patrons. I'll be sending out those prize winners as well. And otherwise, let's get into today's video. Today we're going to talk about Emmy Thorne and his book, his series, The Immortal's Guide to Supervillainy. I've talked about this a few times. Well, I've talked about it in the first three books. You guys know I like superhero type novels. This one does fall under the harem lit subclassification as well. And it's just interesting. It's just interesting. I do kind of feel like this is the weakest entry in the series. It does not necessarily mean it is bad, but it does feel a little bit weaker. But it does also open up a, a few, uh, not open up, but it does answer a few more questions and just introduce a few interesting things to it. It does almost feel like like Thorne might be, not, might not really have any kind of game plan for Dr. Undying and and this this story arc, if there is a story arc, that might be why it feels kind of weak because it doesn't necessarily feel like it's moving towards anything really. This one almost sort of has some some feelings of culminations of the first three books because we are dealing with the widow. The widow has been mentioned a few times in the previous the previous three books of the series. She's popped up a few times. She is sort of Doctor Undying's foil. She is another immortal. And all the immortals that, that we meet through this, they're all pretty interesting in how they, how their immortality works, whether or not they can be killed, if it's even possible. We actually get a couple of, of times where we do feel like there could potentially be an actual threat to Dr. Undying via some, some magic or magic tech kind of thing. But the Widow has kind of been his foil, not just in the last three books, but throughout history. He talks about how he imprisoned her under ice for who knows how long, decades, centuries, I can't remember if, if he even says. Um, and they have always, always, always sort of butted heads because Dr. Undying, his primary goal is just the advancement and the safeguard and security of the superpowered race. He tends to look at the superpowers as as the next, as a separate a separate species from humanity in a way, the next evolutionary step, and his entire goal is the safety and preservation of that. And he, the, the one thing I do really like about this series is it puts a different slant on the whole villain trope and villain mentality, and it's one that I kind of like, I really, really like, and it fits in with a lot of things. In a lot of ways, Dr. Dying is more of an anti-hero than a super villain. He, he simply believes in doing the right thing period. And everything else just does not matter. He does not care about, uh, you know, he, he wants to protect, or at least, not maybe not protect, but he won't go out of his way to, to hurt civilians, and might even go slightly out of his way to protect civilians. He will go completely out of his way to protect superpowered innocents. And he's, aside from that, he's, he's not afraid to kill, has no problems killing, has no problems seeing people killed has no problems breaking the laws. He does not consider the laws to be more important than the safety and security of people, of his people. So he's he's a villain in that he does not believe in following the laws. He does what he does the most efficient way he does it, period. And and really that's his, his end all be all. It doesn't help that he's doesn't hurt that he's you know filthy rich as well and has an incredibly powerful AI that's technically illegal as well. So we're dealing with the widow and, and he's finally decided that this needs to end. Him and the widow have gone at it plenty of times. Now the widow is one of the immortals throughout history that he actually does not know how her immortality works. And what we end up discovering is she is not actually superpowered. Her her immortality works in an entirely different way and she is also not actually particularly skilled with magic either. In fact, she might just be a normal person. It's pretty 
pretty interesting and pretty weird how this ends up coming into play. We also end up getting some Arthurian, a lot of Arthurian, Arthurian legends coming into play in this book. In fact, I would almost say that sort of the entire crux of of the book, or at least the enmity between the two and the widow's background, all sort of rests within Arthurian legend, which is pretty cool because you get things like the Mists of Avalon and stuff like that that are almost they're almost sentient. I won't call them sapient, but they're almost sentient, and it's it's pretty interesting, pretty interesting, and it's it's just a fun little book. Thing thing with Emmy Thorne's books, they're not going to win any awards for any kind of great fiction or the next great American novel, anything along those lines. But they're fun. They're fun. They're easy reads. They're they're a good time with amusing enough dialogue and of course the spicy scenes for those of you guys that like them. If you like super powered books, if you like the uh, the harem lit, or if you just like want a quick, easy, fun read, check out The Immortal's Guide to Super Villainy by Amy Thorne. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye now.